I will just tell you a brief background. Um, Sign, you heard what we do. We help uh, early stage startups to grow. And I've been with Sign for the last six years uh, and uh, primarily look at incubation related activities. Most of my day is spent in, is spent in reviewing startup pitches. So I've seen uh, pitches ranging from um, an idea stage to a company looking at scaling up in the US. So uh, it's, it's, it's a journey and it's a learning process. And I also learn even now uh, in terms of how to make a pitch, what are the crucial elements which needs to be there. Uh, but the foundation is about uh, the customer, right? Uh, what does the customer need and how do we build a product that the customer will eventually buy or pay for, right? And so uh, if you look at the newspapers, many of the news is in terms of startup funding, right? And uh, that's what most of the newspapers cover. 30th Unicorn, uh, you know, the, the second uh, uh, Bitcoin-based cryptocurrency startup, Kubera, you know, it was the 30th uh, Unicorn, which, which got added this year. Uh, prior to that was Licious, it was the 29th. And, you know, Gupshap, one of our incubators was, I think, number 20 odd. Uh, so we're seeing unicorns every day, but that's what the um, newspaper kind of gives us. Startup is all about funding, uh, but more importantly, startup is all about identifying the right product that you need to build. And so uh, very recently I spoke with one of our startups and um, uh, he was, I was like, How, uh, have you, uh, are you looking at raising funding? They're like, no, we are uh, raising funds internally. And I asked, what does that mean? No, we are getting funds from our customers. I said, that's the that's right way of looking uh, forward too, uh, because the more you kind of um, grow organically, the, more, uh, the less you will need to dilute your company or share the pie to other investors. And, and the earlier you do, you share a larger pie because whoever takes a higher risk and typically at an early stage, anybody takes an early risk in investing, uh, they would take a higher reward. So they take a larger piece of the pie. Um, but if um, you know, the company folds, you know, the pie is no more. Uh, so it's very crucial for investors as well as for startups to, to understand uh, when and what uh, should be involved and how do we communicate. So communication is the key. And before that is research. Uh, so with that kind of background, I would uh, quickly take you through uh, a short presentation on uh, Lean Model Canvas. If you would help me in building the canvas, I'll quickly introduce what the canvas is. And um, we will go together in building a canvas for one of the startups, which is very familiar to us. Okay. Lean Canvas was actually from uh, a modification of the business model canvas. And it was founded by an Indo-American called uh, Ash Maurya. And the sign had the... Uh, uh, privilege of speaking to him last week. Uh, in fact, uh, he had a proposition for, uh, proposition for our uh, startups in terms of his um, um, software for identifying early stage startups, giving them training, et cetera. Uh, so we spoke to him, in fact, uh, last Friday. Um, and so uh, this is uh, the background in terms of the Lean Canvas. A Lean Canvas, we feel that it is more suited for early stage startups. Why do you think startups fail? And what are the uh, top 20 reasons? Uh, there are top 20 reasons identified by CB Insights, uh, but can you just put on chat or tell what are the main number one reason why startups fail? Yeah, we did uh, discuss this. So I think uh, one of the reasons why startups fail is, you know, the product that you are making, there isn't a need or there aren't users in the market present for that. So I think that is one of the reasons why it could yeah. fail. Absolutely. There is no market need. You're building a product, but nobody wants to buy it, right? And that is a major reason why startups fail. And that is where and why we, we need to do our research in terms of finding out what do people need and build a product uh, based on that. And so um, that's where the Lean Canvas really helps you. It helps you verify your product or an idea that you're building, helps you focus on the customer. And they have something called as a sell before you build methodology. So uh, the actual methodology is called the loop of build, measure, and learn, uh, wherein you kind of build a hypothesis, you test your assumptions um, before actually you know, building a product. So you build certain experiments and then uh, make something called as a minimum viable product. You must have heard about MVP. Uh, one of our, uh, uh, my colleagues, okay, he, he kind of helped in visualizing what an MVP looks like. So you don't bake the entire cake, uh, but you cut it, and show a piece of the cake so that you can see the different layers in it and probably somebody can uh, test the flavor etc before it is actually you know fully fully made um, but that's it's it's complex in terms of uh, different uh, domains that you're in but the idea is to 
um, go out to the market, collect feedback, uh, build a little bit about it, measure it in terms of uh, doing an analysis, in terms of doing a customer survey, without uh, actually telling what your product is, you kind of get feedback on uh, what are the different features probably uh, you would like to see if I'm making, uh, for example, a smart stethoscope. So you go to a doctor, uh, the the uh, startup idea that, uh, in fact, Professor Chaku was telling you guys discussed yesterday from uh, Professor Biravi, uh, they went out into the market. And in fact, the very first uh, product, the prototype or the MEP that they created had headphones like these, right? Or the earphones. And uh, immediately the doctor said, you know, that removes our identity. Uh, and uh, they said, uh, what do you mean? So they said the doctors are known by the way we put our stethoscope on our collar. And if they see a headphone, they'll be like, okay, it doesn't look like a doctor. It looks more like a DJ player than a doctor, right? So right. Um, they, they immediately took the feedback and they said, we're not reinventing the stethoscope. We would build, uh, in fact, they kind of uh, pivoted their idea of actually building the whole stethoscope to a connector, which can convert the analog to a digital stethoscope. Had they not gone and found this important uh, feedback at the beginning, they would have probably built the uh, stethoscope with the headphone module and they would have you know, only realized later on that this is not going to sell. That, that would have been the lack of market, no market need, the very first reason for why startups fail. And now they have built a successful product because they continuously heard the voice of their potential customer, right? And that's the uh, sell before you build methodology. It's a capsule, so that's why I'm going a little fast. Uh, and so we will look at the canvas. We'll break it down into nine different uh, small boxes here. That's how you know the canvas is being built. Usually there is a way of filling the canvas and uh, it always starts with the customer as uh, we have been you know, seeing in all these sessions. So uh, first is you list down your target customers, right? Um, and so if you're building a product just in your mind map, you know, you list down who your customers are and that's your uh, assumption that this person would be your customer. But very often we've seen startups coming and tell us, you know, I remember a startup who showed a globe when you asked about the customer. I said, the entire world is our customer. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, I was shocked to know, uh, you know that uh, they haven't done that kind of a deep drilling into down, uh, drilling down into what their exact customers would look like. And so you need to identify your early adopters. So there is an actual innovation curve, which starts from your early adopters to uh, early majority, late majority, uh, and the laggards. Uh, basically, when an iPhone was launched first, everybody didn't buy it, right? There were tech enthusiasts who want to uh, try something different. They were the early adopters. So uh, these will, this will be your ambassadors for your startup uh, or your product. And they, they will refer it. They will give uh, word of mouth. And that's how, you know, it kind of diffuses. That's the innovation diffusion curve. It diffuses and then more people start buying in. I would say I was more of a laggard in, when it came to iPhone. It was by the time iPhone 6 got released that I really uh, bought it. By the time iPhone 8 was released, you know, so I, I was really a laggard in terms of, so multiple people come in at different stages in your, uh, uh, in your product innovation. So identifying your customers, <clears throat> list, them, list them down. That would be the first step. Number two, um, what would be the top customer problems, top three customer problems, and list that down and identify which are the existing alternatives for these problems, okay? Uh, so we'll just listen through the different uh, building blocks of the canvas here, but we'll take the example of a startup after this. Identify which are the existing alternatives. And then how are these problems currently solved today? List that down. And uh, after that, for each problem that you identify, uh, identify which is the revenue streams for, uh, for, for the different sources of revenue. Sorry, I would just, uh, in fact, go here. I would, uh, for each problem, you would go identify a solution to each problem. That would be the next step. And then identify what would be the revenue sources uh, for these each of these solutions, how much will they will the potential customer pay for it? Then comes the unique value proposition. Uh, so this is the order that, in fact, Ash had uh, Ash Maria, the founder, has uh, actually mentioned. Uh, but you can choose any model which you prefer. Prefer, but some people go with problem solution model. Some people start with the customer. Uh, but this is the textbook definition of uh, you know how it should be. Uh, but you know you don't have to do this. But I'm just telling in terms of the building blocks. Identify what your unique value proposition is basically the USP of your product. What is that which is very compelling, which your competitor is not offering, right? Um, and then how do you reach your, your channels to customers? Uh, meaning, how do you communicate that you exist? For early stage startups, it becomes very difficult, but now thanks to digital media, 
there are multiple ways in which you can you know in fact almost at a very minimal cost you can reach out to customers right uh, there is social media marketing uh, and uh, digital media and then influencers and, and you know viral vid videos which can really you know take you up that curve very very fast and then identify what are your key metrics uh, in fact then different numbers that tell that you how your business is doing if it is uh, you know um, if you're making an app it'll be number of uh, uh, downloads which had, which you had number of active monthly users who would be using it number of hours they're using it etc so these are metrics or measures that tells that you know your business is progressing and then what will be the the cost structures for this this there is fixed and variable cost um, and then finally you know this is something you can fill in at the last usually what is the unfair advantage uh, which cannot be easily copied or or built it could be the um, it could be the ip that you have or the team that you're building or the advisory board or anything which which your you know uh, which your competitor can't easily copy it is also called called as the moat m o a t which basically means if there is a castle there is a kind of a embankment around it which prevents the enemy from attacking easily and that's why it's called an entry barrier or unfair advantage or or a moat so this is in terms of the uh, the lean canvas these are the different building blocks and now we will kind of uh, do a uh, a short uh, example so these are the numbers as i said uh, based on what ash maria had uh, uh, mentioned it starts with the customer then problem uh, etc so but uh, guys based on your uh, startup that you have you can either go from uh, a problem solution fit uh, that is typically what uh, at sign also we kind of uh, tell startups that you identify a problem and then work on that build a solution and then you know uh, but these two should be done in parallel in fact you should be building a product that a customer would would buy and that should be the focus right now what we'll do is we'll get into an example of uh, uber right that's that's pretty simple uh, and that's with with uh, 10 minutes that i have we can probably uh, build this up right so let's start uh, um, and uh, please one of you or few of you should help me in filling this canvas who would be the target customers for uber Hello. people who commute office. people who commute commute from one place to another no office goers uh, offices <laughs> or otherwise i think okay anybody else people so, who do not own their own uh, vehicle yeah um sure so let's say maybe people in like uh, tier 2 and 3 like cities uh, perhaps it's not available everywhere so. sure so uh, roughly it comes under commuters office goers passengers anybody else that uh, uber is targeting as their travelers customers? yeah yeah tourists yeah sure who else uses it there are two different apps for uber one as passenger users who drivers drivers uh, uh -huh. yeah. right so it's a different segment one is uh, a particular segment this is another segment right uh, the drivers now let's look at the uh, customer problems uh, that these people have what do you think are the problems that uber solved for them or the problems that was existing uh, before uber came into existence well, the transport reaches your house or like it reaches your location instead of you going uh, having to go somewhere and find it for you so yeah Easy convenience, okay. You can pay book something. Available to find taxi or. Easy to contact driver. Uh, problem. Round the clock service. What were the problems? Uh, Not the solution. You need to think of parking. Available to find taxi. Sorry. No need to, to think of parking positions in metro cities. Yeah. Okay. Parking was one. Sure. Or uh, and pay the pricing. Expensive. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, taxes were expensive i remember the when i came to sign for my interview i got uh, <laughs> i got pleased by the uh, drivers uh, at uh, mumbai airport i had to pay around 1000 uh, rupees from uh, andheri to pavai that was my first time in mumbai so there is no control you, you, they just tell a random price and you you know go ahead with it okay reliable reliable reliability yeah the time consumption consumption has reduced we can uh, security yeah. security yeah sure less risk sure it's more it's more secure so that's in terms of your customer segment which is in bold what about uh, the ones which for the drivers 
navigation uh, employment yeah part time employment and employment yeah consistent income income yeah easier for them to find the customers like uh, they Absolutely. can now find in different areas yeah drivers also don't need to own a uh, car I, they can also operate without that so, yeah so these were the problems right and uh, what were the alternatives which was available for example like public transport right or uh, kali pili right you know there is competition uh, yeah we can probably put ola and uh, you know other uh, ride sharing apps so this is probably when uber started okay and and, and you know a lean model canvas is usually built when you are starting your business it's really to identify uh, whether uh, you know you should uh, you are right in terms of your uh, uh, you know your business uh, plan that you have Yeah. or should you pivot or should you persevere it's helping it's for identifying that uh, so let's take this uh, probably 5 years back when uber started off rather than looking at it now uh, yeah it's for identifying that uh, so let's take this uh, probably 5 years back when uber started off rather than looking at it now um, yeah i can hear my echo for some reason okay cool um what is the solution that uber offered some of you already told that uh, it is convenience So yeah, we are looking at the solution part of the canvas. One in terms of Uber, one was the convenience part of it. Second, it was somebody said it was cheaper. Any other solution that Uber is offering? Um, so this is in terms of the uh, passengers. Now let's see in terms of drivers. What are the different ways in which Uber is helping them? I uh, wouldn't uh, like ownership of private vehicles also be a problem or like a solution in this case, uh, and the rise of ownership of private uh, vehicles. Yep. So a lease model, right? The reason I'm trying to show this is because there are two set of customers which are different, and the problems for each of these is different. So we need to target. So when you do the customer discovery, when you go out and speak to people. You should identify um, the different. People have uh, people have also written some options in the chat. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Navigation, payment options, payment options, safety of passengers. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Um, payment options will come in fact here. Um, all right, and then there is ratings, which on both the sides. So we'll, we'll go there as well as here. You got the uh, idea, right? why it is important that you identify two set of customers whose needs are different great and now let's look at the revenues what are the different uh, revenue sources it's usually uh, a percentage fixed percentage of uh, right right we're running out of time so i'll just quickly uh, tell i think it's around 25 percentage or something um, and now uh, let's look at the diff- so what is the value proposition that uber is really giving it's a single compelling message that states convenience is one major thing it's one app what else in chat exact time of commute live feedback yeah it's convenience right basically uber is selling convenience and it's saying it is safe and then uh, for the drivers part of it it would be uh, uh, flexibility and then uh, navigation No. Uh, so, in short, if you say kind of an elevator pitch for Uber, it will be like we are like we are like taxi, but cheaper, safer, and flexible. You know, that's kind of the uh, one line description. And we like you know one line descriptions. Investors like one line descriptions because it's so much easy for us to understand what you're doing if it is you know in a capsule of uh, telling what it is. A Lo- lot of time, uh, students or you know others. Uh, when startups approach us, they keep telling about uh, about the technology, and we be like, "Wanting what? Are, what are they actually building? You know, what is it?" They say it is, uh, you know, it's computation fluid dynamics, this, that, and we be wondering, what is that they're building? So, you know, it should be in terms of the value offering to the customer that should come out first, and uh, you know, that's uh, you know, it takes time in building that, and the more and more feedback you get uh, from people around you, that's how you build your kind of you know your elevator pitch. Now, how do you reach your customers moving on to the number 6 on the slide now what are the channels in which uber kind of reaches the customer app yeah, yeah sure but uh, before they came on to the app how do you know that they exist advertising and word of mouth yeah 
perfect word of mouth right what else you get paid if you refer a customer 125 rupees referrals right? these are the first initial way almost all uh, e-commerce and uh, apps do that uh, they, you get so uh, initial free rides i think which were offered to customers yeah free free rides okay but it's very difficult for a startup to give anything for free and we tell our startups don't give anything for free <laughs> cool um what else now um and now we come to the metrics how do you know you're doing well it's pretty straightforward rides number of rides uh number and then user downloads and since it's an app there's something called as arpu average revenue per user mau these are all terminologies monthly active users average revenue per user etc um what is the cost main cost that uber has here purchasing cars technology oh um, we don't purchase cars uber doesn't purchase cars technology yeah, yeah. So their interface yeah sure what else and anyway, it's in a fixed cost and variable cost yeah customer care training yeah customer care is important salaries yeah that's your variable cost sorry your fixed cost which is fixed every year cool now unfair advantage uh, they have access to data they have access to um drivers and like um, cab aggregations and they have uh, you know there some people own fleets which is entirely dedicated to uber some people are now the, uh, uber has their own uh, set of cabs as well and now it, and it comes to branding this is basically in terms of what uh, you know how you build your your canvas very important to modify the canvas uh, as and when you receive feedback from your customers cool so this is the same set of uh, steps that we use at sign we ask the elevator pitch we ask for the team uh, the problem opportunity solution current status you ask for a demo that's like the mvp uh, to be displayed the unique value proposition competitive landscape you know this is how a competitive landscape is usually uh, demonstrated you have different parameters which is uh, common and unique to you and the different companies which are your competitors and how you fare vis-a-vis uh, -vis them versus yours the market segment market size channels revenue model costs metrics and validation you know all these we discussed in the lean model canvas so it's like a snapshot of your of your business plan interestingly we stopped using business plans uh, ever since 2015 because that is something which the investors ask you to do and they never read it themselves right uh, and so uh, we started pushing towards uh, breaking it down into small modules or building blocks and making startups to think and you know write and rewrite the business canal model canvas over time and slowly you know we started the lean then slowly move to the business model canvas learn insights and then constantly improve all right uh it's 12 25 okay yeah um uh, questions here guys yeah uh so uh, like this is like one of the very you know very no very common thing when an investor asks you okay what is that something you are doing separate from what the ola is doing right now right because mm -hmm. that's that's like one of the factors why he would think of investing yeah and if, if like from the uh, point of uh, perspective of what we wrote on the lean canvas it was very much common that the problem statement and the usp that we have been selling or the uber and ola has been selling so in that situation how would you you know how would you differentiate these two things and how would you take a hold on that at that stage i want uh, like just uh, right. because it is an example that you have been telling that's why i just came up with this sure right so um one is you see how big the market is and how many players can can be there right and then uh, you know it's it's constant improvement over time uh, and then uh, looking at the taxi aggregator market at, at that point in time it was pretty huge and it was anybody's game uh, we need deep pockets to kind of be there and it is getting a point wherein there will be aggregation within the aggregator market it, in itself right so why is flipkart getting getting fun? i mean uh, sorry uh, flipkart was being acquired by walmart but there was already amazon and all these players people want to consolidate and investors want to take a bet wherein you know there'll be one person standing and uh, they will get their exit from other customers other investors probably who would buy out from one 
one startup. So that's a different mindset altogether uh, in terms of, ag of aggregators. Coming back to the tech startups, unless you have, and since if, and for tech startups, you mostly play in a niche, niche game, uh, right? Where the market is also less. So we're moving out for a market which is wide and open to tech startups wherein you provide solutions for a distinct set of customers who are needing a particular solution. There, if you have multiple players, the pie itself is small and uh, you are seeing um, that multiple players are coming into it. And if you are a me too player there uh, and for a startup with, which doesn't have a deep pocket, that could be detrimental if you don't do your customer analysis or your uh, competitor analysis to identify that the market is growing at probably let's say a single digit uh, per year. And uh, these are my customers. So these are my competitors. They're ex doing exactly similar to what I'm doing. Um, if I am not uh, at the top of my game, either I would be a uh, an acquisition target. I hope I would be an acquisition target. If not, you know, I will lose out customers and it'll be like a red ocean. It's called a red ocean where you kind of uh, are in a segment where competitors are actually, you know, at, at each other. Um, and so that is not a right segment to enter. And that's why it's very important to kind of understand early itself, whether you should uh, persevere um, or pivot to prevent, uh, otherwise you would perish in the market. And this, that's why we tell, keep telling people to go out and meet and speak to people. Uh, for a tech startup, uh, it's very important to kind of differentiate that uh, at the beginning itself. Yes, Ria? So uh, my question was that uh, when we are um, planning the lean model canvas, or we are um, presenting it to uh, potential investors, let's say we want to also discuss our further expansion and scope uh, of the startup. So what should we do that at this stage or should we wait? Because since you also mentioned that a lean model canvas is a right fit for earlier startups, young startups. So uh, in, let's say if we want to mention our expansion and scope, how should we go about it? Um, it depends on who you're asking uh, your money from and what stage. If you're mm -hmm. at a stage wherein uh, you kind of tell that um, I'm building my product, expansion is still in the air, right? You're just uh, not sure. Uh, especially if it is medical devices or depending on the domain, there is a lot of uh, de-risking which needs to be done. Regulatory is one, or if it is any certification which is required um, or a crucial part of the product development uh, which needs to be developed before you kind of uh, reach that. So you kind of break down your uh, journey into different milestones. And you tell investors very frankly that, you know, I am looking at this particular stage, I am uh, looking at funds to go from A to B. Uh, and uh, my, but my vision, you should always sell your vision to the investor. My vision is to build this product. And if it is uh, built, and I'm sure it will be built because I have a strong team. I'm from IT, IT Hyderabad. I've got um, you know, people in my team with complementary skill sets, business, tech, et cetera, who are uh, taking that uh, same risk with me. Uh, and you know, there are oftentimes when you tell people that I left my job in Accenture or whatever, because I want to pursue this because I'm so much convinced that this is going to work. So you sell your vision to the, uh, uh, to the investor in early stage and you decide how much you need. Don't uh, you know, quote that you need a crore or a five crore at the beginning itself, right? They would see if you're a realistic uh, uh, entrepreneur or not because they've seen multiple uh, entrepreneurs, right? And many times, I think it's, let's say eight out of 10, they bet on the team, the founder than on the technology itself. Right, so uh, to, uh, to answer your question, uh, you know, whether you need to show the expansion plan itself, but break down your entire plan into small uh, chunks and tell that this is what I'm gonna achieve uh, through this. And you know, these are the follow on, this is my vision. So sell that uh, to the investor. Thank you. Uh, I also got another question while you were answering it. So uh, uh, you just said, you know, we all, uh, we'll already have a sum in our mind when we're uh, pitching for investment. So um, do we show them our entire budget or should, should we show them our entire financial plan and then say out of this, this is the percentage we would like uh, to pitch for investment from you all? Yeah, so um, there are different ways of doing it. Uh, one is that uh, in your milestone, you break it down. If it is product development is so much, IP is this much. Some of these are parallel, some are sequential, right? Parallel activities, you need to be sure that you would be achieving that at the end of six months. List down those parallel activities and tell that, you no, know, it's like a, a uh, stage gate model. This is a stage, there is a gate, it needs to be opened and move to the next stage, right? Uh, put it down and tell it to the investor, um, over a period of six months, this is what I'm looking at, this is a short-term vision, but my long-term plan for a period of 18 months, 
it needs five CR, and this is how you know follow-on funding would come through. And uh, these are my advisors who is helping me. All this, you know, this is the incubator which is incubating me. This is my alma mater. This is my professor. You know, all these would kind of uh, give more confidence to the investor. And obviously, it's it's a conversation. And not in, any investor is not going to put in money in the right, uh, you know. Uh, beginning itself. There's something called as a due diligence process. It's a, it's a long process of it takes uh, minimum of two months to kind of do. So yeah. 